Lee Sin Chin's legacy is honored in Korea um, today um, through uh, a, a ton of different ways. They have museums dedicated to him. I believe there's over a hundred different monuments dedicated to him all throughout Korea. Um, he is their greatest hero and I guess the best way to uh, compare him is to say that he's the George Washington of Korea. Regarded as one of the most prestigious naval commanders in history, Yi Soon Shin's accomplishments are nothing short of remarkable. He was a decorated war hero in the 16th century, and his influence still lives on today. His victories in combat and outstanding leadership are talked about in both comic books and TV shows alike. Now we're here to expand on the fascinating tale that is the legendary warrior. Yi Soon Shin was born in 1545 in a town called Hanseong, located in present-day Seoul, South Korea. As a young boy, he spent time playing war games with his friends, even fletching his own bow and arrow as a teenager. At the age of 21, Yi passed his military exam and was posted to the Pukbyong Military District. There, he defended the border settlements against marauders and quickly made a reputation for himself. However, this led to jealousy from his superiors, who falsely accused Yi of desertion during battle. This led to Yi being stripped of his rank, imprisoned, and tortured, but this didn't stop him from re-enlisting after his release. He quickly rose through the ranks again and eventually attained the esteemed position of commander of the Left Jola Naval District. This set the stage for Yi's involvement in his greatest battles, considered some of the most incredible of all time. There is no way that the uh, Korean military um, would have been able to uh, defeat Japan if it wasn't for Yi Sun Shin. His uh, strategies and his approach to fighting this particular war was essential in order for uh, the events to occur. Yi was able to take control of the regional navy and strengthen it through his construction of turtle ships and other reforms. This was just before the famous Japanese invasions of Korea, now known as the Imjin War, which saw Yi become a national hero for the Korean nation. So the events that take place in Yi Sun Shin um, actually uh, record uh, the Imjin War, which was a seven year conflict between uh, Korea, Japan, and China. So what happened was, is uh, in 1592, Hideyoshi Toyotomi, uh, the Japanese warlord, was able to successfully unite uh, Japan after a hundred years of civil war. And he was commanding uh, the strongest military force in the world, which was the samurai. And he decided that he wanted to uh, invade Korea in order to uh, use it as a staging um, point to go into China, Russia, and then Europe. Increasing the size of his fleet, Hideyoshi thought he could just overwhelm Korea's navy through numbers, but Yi was determined to win. Having never commanded a naval battle in his life, Yi was still able to win battle after battle against Japan, despite constantly having the odds against him. This was because Yi was such an amazing strategist and leader. One of Yi's most brilliant triumphs was the Battle of Hansan Island. This was an especially difficult battle, with Japan having nearly a hundred more ships than Korea. Nevertheless, Yi's small fleet was able to destroy almost half of the Japanese ships, and capture some too. This, along with Yi not losing even one ship on his side, made this battle a huge turning point in the war. It's said to be the third largest naval battle in world history, as if it couldn't get any more awesome. Yi Sun Shen uh, had a very uh, specific way of encouraging his men to go into battle. Um, because they were so outnumbered, they were very afraid of going up against the Japanese. And not only were they outnumbered, but they also were not uh, trained as well as the Japanese soldiers were. So one thing he did to motivate them was he gathered all of them and he would give these great speeches. And in one very important battle, he got all his men together and he said to them, uh, those who seek death shall live and those who seek life shall die and he did this in order to boost their morale. So once they um, heard these words, they were ready to go out and fight. The Battle of Myeongyang 
was another of Yi's astounding victories, where he and his navy were once again outnumbered 133 warships to 12, not to mention Japan's 200 support ships close behind. Success seemed impossible, but due to Yi's tactical skill and charismatic leadership, the Korean navy was able to sink 31 of Japan's ships while still not losing a single of theirs. These victories are just two of Yi's several military achievements. In fact, Yi had never lost a single battle his entire career. That's 23 major naval battles undefeated. Incredible. Yi Sun Chen's greatest military accomplishment was building a very small naval force that had the power to withstand uh, the Japanese samurai invasion forces in 1592. Um, the Korean military was not prepared for an invasion and uh, they didn't have very good training. And not only were they poorly trained, but they didn't have proper equipment to withstand uh, the Japanese. So when Yi Sun Shin um, started training his soldiers, he did a very good job of preparing them. And if he hadn't been there to do that, then there was no way he could have won every single battle he fought. On December 15, 1598, the war ended in an intense battle. East Korean Navy, combined with Ming Dynasty China, fought against Japan in what was called the Battle of Noyang. According to Korean sources, more than 500 ships were on Japan's side, while China and Korea had not even a third of that number. Even so, the chaotic battle led to Japan bidding a hasty retreat and Yi ordering his men to pursue them. As this happened, a stray bullet from an enemy ship struck Yi, and he felt that the wound was fatal. As his eldest son and nephew watched in horror, Yi uttered his last words. The war is at its height. Wear my armor and beat my war drums. Do not announce my death. It is said that when news of Yi's death spread, several soldiers, Chinese and Korean alike, wailed in grief. Yi died a warrior and is remembered as a hero to Koreans even to this day. His leadership and legacy in history lives on. The reason why I decided to make a comic about Yi Sun Shin is because uh, when I decided I wanted to break into the comic book industry, I was looking for an edge, and when I discovered the story of Admiral Yi, I realized that this was uh, something that would allow me to stand out differently as a, as a writer trying to break into the comic book industry, rather than writing about something uh, common like superheroes or zombies or, uh, you know, uh, sci-fi stuff, I figured I could um, go into this uh, uh, interesting character's history and tell about it. So some interesting facts that most people probably don't know about Yi Sun Shin is uh, he actually had three concubines and from each concubine he had, uh, I believe, three children. Yi Sun Shin was uh, successful in all of his naval campaigns despite not having any experience fighting in naval battles because uh, he was able to, now, uh, to acquire knowledge about how to fight naval battles. He didn't come into the picture acting like he was an expert on everything. He um, trusted his men to um, do what they did best and it was through them that he was able to uh, gather knowledge himself and become an expert on fighting naval battles. So uh, it wasn't just him who was fighting these battles and winning them, it was his men. It was a combined effort. 